that, that helps you in the editing process. Friday! Yes! So I have the AMC A-List, and what that is is a subscription service wherein for $19.95 a month, I get up to three movies a week. And so from December 2018 to March 2020, I saw 177 different movie showings in a 66-week period of time, which is insane. Then the pandemic came along and did all up. But now movies are back, and so am I. So it's time for some up-to-date movie reviews with... Steve Stubbs of the Week! Thank you, that was wonderful. Uh, this installment of Steve Stubbs represents my 21st week back in theaters, and in that time I have seen 37 movies in theaters. I only saw one this week, but we'll get to that. We'll talk about that. This week I saw the following movie in theaters, and my movie pick of the week that we will be talking about at length Ghostbusters Afterlife. And we'll also be discussing the movie I did not see, and for a reason. So, first off, let's talk about the movie that I didn't see in theaters. Um, so, I've been wrestling with gender recently. You might be shocked by this. Uh, uh, it catches us all by surprise. Yeah, well... Let me tell you the best part. If only about... there were some signs leading up to this. Yeah, it came out of nowhere, right? The yeah. best part about being a man who is also a woman is that at the end of the day, I can take my titties off and put them in a box. Yes. Which I think gives me at least one up on uh, most women out there. So, yes. Mm, got that. So, uh, I've been slowly but surely dipping my feet out of the men pool and into the women pool all year. All year I've been doing this. And, and, uh, but last weekend, I really jumped into the deep end of the pool, and I went out uh, to the movies for the first time as a woman, and it was amazing and scary and frightening and freeing, and I went to the bathroom as a woman for the first time, and that was so, uh, just such a, I was so proud of myself. I took a selfie in the bathroom while I was peeing, and then I was going to post it online, and I'm like, okay, maybe this is only exciting to you, maybe you shouldn't be posting bathroom selfies, but anyway, I, I, I was excited and it's so exciting to be out and about as yourself and to look in the mirror and be able to actually see you or the you you want to be. And uh, fun fact, I am bipolar. And uh, usually all that means is um, uh, massive mood shifts. Like I'll just go through the day and then, hey, I'm feeling pretty good, you know? Feeling pretty happy about myself. And feeling pretty confident, spring in my step, I'm going to have a great day. Yep, things are going great. And then suddenly in my head, remember that time you sent a love letter to a girl in fifth grade and you didn't even know who she was, but she got your love letter and made all of the other women in class read it and you became a fucking freak? You're a dumbass, Steve. And that's the worst thing you'll ever do. And we're going to make you depressed for four days straight. Yes. So uh, most of the time it's that. I have a hard time pinpointing specific manic episodes other than when I'm drunk. But uh, the act of finally being out and about as a woman... Uh, sent me into a huge manic episode, and I, suddenly I had something I had to prove. And so I was a woman out and about for three days straight, and I tend to overdo things. Like, my life keeps... Uh, like, whenever we get a gym membership, my wife says the same thing. Okay, honey, you, we haven't had a gym membership in, like, Four years, calm down, be fine. And I'm like, yes, of course, I will. I, I will. I'm, I'm not going to overdo it. 
And next thing you know, I've ran like two m marathons on the treadmill. Yeah. And I'm swimming and I'm trying to lose all this weight and I'm like freaking the fuck out. I overdo it. So by Monday, you know, I had done so much as a woman and, and, and it was such a physical, mental, emotional toll that by the time Monday came around, I was physically and mentally just absolutely exhausted. I'm not sure if gender exhaustion is a thing, but if it's not, I coined it. And so it, by Monday, it's like I said it's 6 p.m. I could go to sleep right now because I'm just so exhausted in every way. Yeah. I, I've been trying to prove something to myself. I, I, I jumped off of so many cliffs. It's difficult being one gender and trying to be another gender because, and I didn't know this until I started jumping off of these cliffs, but it's like, oh man, I want to be the real me, but in order to do that, I have to go out into the outside world and show people who the real me inside is, and that's scary, but what that also means is that, like, hey, I'm going to do the scariest thing that I've ever had to do a hundred times today. Okay. And then tomorrow, wake up and do that shit all over again. And it was really, it was a toll. And at six o'clock, I'm just laying on the bed, completely exhausted, about to pass out. And I'm like, I'm so fucking exhausted from spending three days as a woman and now I have to get up and do makeup and put on my fake boobs and put, out on, put on a nice outfit and put on some leggings. And what am I going to go see? Fucking Clifford? <laughs> I'm going to do all this. I'm going to get in some, a nice outfit, some nice uh, uh, leggings, maybe some stockings and jeans and uh, some, you know, a really nice undershirt and a dress, or maybe this nice top that I just bought, uh, shave my face, because my face isn't used to shaving, and so I'm growing oh, okay, a beard okay, 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 every okay. six okay, minutes. Now, 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 I have shaved my face a time or two. Yeah. Not in the recent past, obviously, but you get the sensation of like a cool breeze going over the shaved parts, don't you? Yeah. Like you yeah. get a weird sensation from it not having been exposed in so long. Yeah, it's weird. It's yeah. Weird. Yeah. And so eventually I just, I just said, I'm not going to see fucking Clifford. Number one, uh, this will be the first time that I go to the movies in my small, bigoted, racist, homophobic town yeah. as a woman. I don't want my first movie in this town as a woman to be fucking Clifford, number one. And number two, just the act of going out, you really got to be brave and bold and strong and confident. And I'm an introvert that hates myself. So it's very difficult to be this type of person. And it's like, so I need to muster all this strength for Clifford? <laughs> so I didn't see Clifford. I'm like, honey, maybe you should put the kids to bed because... And I ended up going to bed at like 7.30. And I slept for a little over 12 hours. And I've been running, I've been running for like six hours of sleep every night. And so like this, I it just knocked out. I was, I was, you know, I, I so I, apparently that's what I needed, you know? And, and also it's fucking Clifford. Well, I, I, it, it's it Clifford. It doesn't sound like, like. You are exhausted because of your gender. It, you're exhausted due to the anxiety and nervousness and all that shit. 
trying to live your gender. I mean, yeah. It's, it's not it's quite fucking the hard. same thing there. Yeah. But it, it yeah, it's it's real fucking hard. But uh yeah. Yes, so you're going go to be Clifford. more exhausted if you are doing terrifying things. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't fully realize that, but yeah, it it I was just absolutely fucking exhausted. If and if we so, threw you in a giant tank full of tarantulas, yeah. You'd probably need a nap after. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So uh so yeah, I didn't go see Clifford. I only saw one movie this week. So let's get to that one movie. Finally, the Steve Stubbs pick of the week is Ghostbusters Afterlife. I want to take this time to say that my movie pick of the week uh, isn't always the best. Usually, it's the one I want to talk the most about. Uh, now, first of all, I want to get this out of the way. There's an Easter egg that no one else in the theater noticed, but uh, for, a, for like a few seconds, you can see that the small town that they're in in Oklahoma, yeah. with finger quotes, because they filmed it all in Canada, but Oklahoma... Uh, they're in the smallest town in the world, and it, it's supposed to be in the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma, and there's nothing to do, and, and they, they have an old-timey fucking soda shop fucking thing, and it, it's a really small town, and nothing's there, and the movie theater is showing cannibal girls. Okay. And it's like, number one, this is more unbelievable than the giant ghosts that are going to show up and terrorize the town. But yeah. I understand why that's there, because that's an Easter egg, because that was Ivan Reitman's first film, and this movie is being directed by Jason Reitman, the son of Ivan Reitman. Oh, I get it. It's nice. cute. It's a cute little uh, Easter egg that you threw uh, on the screen there, but also no one else in, in this town is, is noticing that. But anyway... Uh, also, it's really weird to see to to have an entire theater of people sing uh, "Who You Gonna Call" in 2021. Yeah, that was really fucking weird. I thought I was done with this. <laughs> you know. So uh, okay, so I want to start off this discussion by saying that it's going to sound like I hated the new Ghostbusters movie. I did not hate the Ghostbusters movie. It's not a bad movie. It's a good movie. Now, let me try and explain why that's the problem. Um, yes. the, 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 the short explanation is, welcome to fan service, the movie. The long uh, version of that is, uh, this movie represents the new Hollywood, which is less, here's an original thing, and more, hey, you know this old property? Here's a new one with everything you like in it. Yeah. Everything you want is in this movie. This is for you fans, and hey, it's a new movie, but there's not much new about it other than special effects, because this is more of the same. Basically, I just described the new Matrix movie. Uh, it... The, the show... The, the entire movie is a slow reveal of a bunch of stuff that is, is here because of the fans. It... It made me appreciate the 2016 all-female Ghostbusters movie so much more yeah. because that one took risks. It didn't feel like a Ghostbusters movie, and that's good. They took this Ghostbusters franchise and said, we're going to do something new and different with it, but audiences a lot of times don't want something new and different that takes risks. Audiences just want to be comforted by more of the same. Which basically means that the 26, 2016 Ghostbusters movie is Star Wars The Last Jedi 
And the new Ghostbusters film, Ghostbusters Afterlife, is Star Wars The Force Awakens. The Last Jedi was different and went to different places that we haven't seen before and tried to be bold and tried to take exciting risks, but people don't want it. More of the same. Yeah. So, so, so the new Ghostbusters, you know, there's nothing challenging about it. And, of course, you don't hate it. You like it because, oh, here's the movie. Oh, hey, everything's boring for 20 minutes. Here's the logo you love. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 15 more minutes of boring stuff. What is this? A PKE meter? Yeah. Remember? Remember? This is the <coughs> thing from the thing. Okay. Uh, uh, here's a 15 more minutes of boring family drama. There's a car in that garage. I wonder what it is. Hey, it's the car! You, you, you remember? You remember the car? That's the car. You that's remember the, the car. car? Yeah, that's the car. It's not working, so... <laughs> Montage of someone working on it. And, oh, is it going to work? Is it going to work? There's the siren noise. Huh? Uh, you re do you remember? You remember? That's, that's from the other movie. <laughs> and it's basically that over... It, it, there's a trap. You remember? You remember? The thing... <laughs> Thing. And it's and and uh, Paul Rudd's at the supermarket and uh, oh, there's a rocket coming from over there where those Stay Puft marshmallows are. You you, you yeah. remember? Do you remember that thing? The, the the marshmallows. Those are the marshmallows. And it's like fuck. The ch chick Ghostbusters tried to be funny. And make it exciting and new. And like fucking, this is just a fanboy movie from a bunch of fucking fanboys. And it's just. And then in Act Three. And that's, and that's what the commercials, that's what the trailers I've been seeing, that's all it looked like. And like, when I see the cute little marshmallow man running around on the store shelves, I'm like, really? They you might know? have just, yeah, they might have basically just said, like, uh, hey, remember in the 80s when things only appeared because uh, we want to sell toys of them? Yeah. Here's another retro blast from the past. These annoying-ass things which are just here for merchandising reasons. Yeah. It is, it is a step above Johnny Depp's Dark Shadows. Yeah. Because I, I cannot resist seeing Paul Rudd and Bill Murray act up against each other in a comedy. Well, um, light spoiler alert, the live, all of the Ghostbusters show up. Notice I didn't say all of the living Ghostbusters show up. Yeah. All the Ghostbusters show up. Uh, oh, no. Did they? Oh, but not until the end, and they don't really interact too much with anyone else. It's more of a cameo. It's the whole thing of like, uh, hey, oh, and then, uh, oh, these kids who were trying to catch a ghost, they destroyed the town. They were put in the jail, just like the other ones were in the other film, you remember? And, uh, hey, you destroyed the town, little lady. You are going to be in jail for a long time. What do you have to say for yourself? And the girl says, don't I get a phone call? And the black guy goes, sure, but you just get one. Who are you going to call? Remember, that was the thing. That was the thing from the thing. Do you remember we did that? You're welcome. You love this movie because it has <laughs> all of the things. And so uh, she calls the number from the Ghostbusters commercial that she saw on YouTube, here's the same commercial from TV. You remember? You remember the thing? It's like this movie is trying to be its own thing, but it keeps getting held back by the literal ghost of other Ghostbusters movies. 
And yeah. it kind of sucks. And it kind of made me like the girl one more because it's like, oh, no, we're taking the basis of the last Ghostbusters film and we're making it our own. But this one is just dragged down by the ghost of Ghostbusters. And it kind of okay. sucks. Okay, but now I'm curious. How many Ghostbuster 2 callbacks did they do? There was nothing, and I liked that. There was not a single one at all. No mention of the Statue of Liberty. No mention of anything. Yeah. The yeah. only person, the only person who didn't show up in uh, the new Ghostbusters movie, who wasn't in the other Ghostbusters movies, is what's his name from Little Shop of Horror. Because he doesn't uh, show up. In, yeah. He's the only one who didn't show up because uh, he doesn't act anymore. But everyone else is in it. And there you go. And hooray. And it, it made me worried for Back to the Future because the director of Back to the Future, Robert Zemeckis, he specifically said that in his contract, there will be no further Back to the Future movies as long as I'm alive. Yep. And so, like, fuck, if Robert Zemeckis dies tomorrow, then this time next week we'll be hearing about Back to the Future Returns. What? Marty McFly Jr.? What? He's in the basement and he finds blueprints. What's that? Hey, Dad, I found some weird thing in the basement. Looks like some blueprints for something real weird. Hey, What's the flux capacitor? You remember? You remember? That's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing from the other thing. And it's like, fuck. This is, this is, this is so many movies now. You know? Are just the fan service movies. And, and that sucks. Like, it, it was fun. And it was, it, it was entertaining. But it seems to be held down by the memory of all these other Ghostbusters movies. What it seemed was that uh, Dan Aykroyd signed off on a female Ghostbusters film. And, it, and it's like, oh, yeah, sure, you ladies can do a Ghostbusters film. But make sure you have callbacks to this and 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 this. And this. <gasps> and, this and this and this and this and this and Paul Feig said... Thanks, but no, we're going to do our own thing. And Dan Aykroyd is like, you son of a bitch. How dare you not lick my asshole every second of this film. And so when uh, Lady Ghostbusters bombed, Dan Aykroyd is like, oh, yeah, well, fuck you. I'm immediately working on my own, and it's going to kiss everyone's ass. And so, it, like, this is a good film, but it's... It, it, it makes you appreciate the, the female one more, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's entertaining. It's fun. But, I mean, I will say it's better than Ghostbusters 2. That movie pissed me the fuck off. I hated that movie. <laughs> yeah. I hated that, that movie. not good. But that, that just kind of lets me know that if I'm going to watch one, I kind of have to watch both of them. Uh, it, I oh, and all because, like, I mean, we discussed it when the female one was coming out. It was like, I, I, I'm just not that into Ghostbusters. He, like, it's okay. Yeah, but like, I was an adult at the time, and, and like, I saw Ghostbusters, and I kind of felt like, well, yeah, this is a good movie. I mean, it's no stripes, but it's a good movie. <laughs> You know? Ghostbusters, I guess it's okay. It's no The Burbs. Yeah. Yeah. See, uh, I was a... The second one was fucking tragic. <laughs> I was a kid when Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2 came out, and I loved Ghostbusters, but that's what makes me different from other uh, Gen Xers my age is that I am able to say I loved He-Man. Yeah. As a child. I'm not watching that shit now. Yeah. I'm not spending like my 20s and 30s obsessing over this cartoon I watched when I was 7 and buying all these rare vintage action figures and getting all fucking obsessed with it 
and getting super psyched when Kevin Smith decides to do a reboot that's yet again more fan service ass kissing because no, I'm not fucking eight anymore. Yeah. Like I liked the Ghostbusters when I was a kid, but I, I was a fucking kid, and not a lot of adults do that anymore. It's like, oh hey, this one thing from when I was a kid, I love it. Hey, this one movie I saw when I was a teenager is the best movie of all time. Ha! I tricked you. I wasn't talking about Ghostbusters there. I was talking about Donnie Darko. <laughs> I, there's this one group that I'm on in, on Facebook. Maybe you're on it too. Incredibly Strange Films on Facebook. Yeah. And like, it, it, someone posted like, I'm finally watching Donnie Darko, and I want to hear everyone's thoughts. And, and he seemed like maybe he was looking for someone to hate it, and he's like, Dude, what do you guys think? Do you think that this movie deserves the, the praise that it gets? And yeah, I saw that. I, 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 found the, I didn't really read the thread, but I found it kind of mildly curious. I read through the thread, and everyone was... Uh, talking about how great the film was, but I think that most people missed the point because while they were praising the film, they all said the same thing. Donnie Darko, an amazing film, an incredible vision. He should have died in the beginning, and he t but he tried to live his life in this alternate world. You really have to watch the super longer director's cut to fully understand it, but he had to go back and finish the... Uh, cut off the alternate universe and complete the cycle by saving everyone in his life by sacrificing himself. An incredible film. I love it so much. Saw it when I was a teenager. And then the next person is like, oh, Donnie Darko? Donnie Darko is the best. I saw it when I was 17. Yeah. And then the next person, Donnie Darko is the best film of all time. I saw it when I was 15 and I've loved it ever since. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. I'm sorry, but maybe y'all should be thinking about why you love Donnie Darko so much when you all start off with, I saw it when I was a teenager, and... Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that, that's, that's so... That's, so a, that's, good, that's a good point. I, I, yeah. liked, I like Donnie Darko. I find it an interesting movie. Uh, I, I was kind of interested... I mean, Jesus, you put a six-foot rabbit in it, and it's not Harvey, okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I totally understand. But that. yeah, but no, it, it it's not nearly as deep as things people seem to think it is. Yeah, a lot of times something is just surface level, and people add depth to it. Yeah. Oh, what he, what the director was trying to get at here, and it's like, okay, you're just explaining what you see in it. You're not one hundred percent explaining what is happening in the film. Also. The first right. Ghostbusters. It was, a, it was a movie about angst, an angsty teen that angsty teens really liked, and that's yeah. fine. But like, yeah. don't pull this intellectual superiority crap if yeah. you don't like Donnie Darko. I feel the same way about Empire Records. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people uh, in my generation. I saw it when I was this age, and so. Was that the uh, one another with, uh, thing? Of... Liv Tyler. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I, I saw Manning that. Day. I don't remember it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another thing about the Ghostbusters, the new Ghostbusters movie, is that the the new one is funny, but the original Ghostbusters was fucking Bill Murray at his prime. Yeah. Fucking funny. And this new film isn't that and, and funny. And Dan Aykroyd at his prime, too. And Dan too. Aykroyd, I mean, that, yeah. Dan Aykroyd was a funny dude yeah. for a little while there. But, but this new Ghostbusters movie is trying too hard to be a Steven Spielberg coming-of-age film. Yeah. You know, and it's like, okay, Ghostbusters Afterlife, the original one was funny, but you're just, uh, like, Sense8, Project 8, 8, Millimeter, eight, what was that? Uh, yeah, Steven eight, Spielberg Super movie? 8. Super 8, yeah. You're just being Super 8. Like, it, no thanks. I'm fine. So anyway, that's Ghostbusters Afterlife, my movie pick of the week. Uh, if, you, if your fetish is uh, people in theaters 
singing Ray Parker Jr. songs, then oh boy, are you in luck. Next week, it's going to be a week of dramas. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to see uh, King Richard. I'm not sure how Hollywood made a Venus and Serena Williams biopic and have it be all about Will Smith and not Venus and Serena Williams, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, right? How fucking weird is that shit? Yeah. Yeah. It is fucked up. And then also House of Gucci, which... Eh. But... They're both supposed to be amazing, so I guess we'll see you next week. So join us next week for more up-to-date movie reviews with Steve Stubbs of the Week. And cut on that.